Hello and welcome to the channel. In this video we'll see how to create a simple registration system in Excel using VBA macros. And there are many examples already on the internet, but I felt I want to add this to my channel and I want to explain the different ways to do it. So in this first video we will go through a simple way using a range in a worksheet. So we will introduce the data in each of the cells. But in later videos I will also explain how to use ActiveX form controls in the worksheet or to enter the data through a user form or also using Google Forms. So as an example, we are creating an onboarding system with an onboarding form here. And whenever we add a, an entry, so for example, let's say, let's say we have a new employee starting today, Andrew Evans is gonna be a technician in the Department of Engineering and the manager is John Smith. Then we submit and then we get here in the other worksheet uh, the registry added. And we have a few more options. We can clear the form, we can add a new field to the form, etc. So let's see how to do that on a new workbook. But I'm gonna copy this to save some time formatting the workbook. So here's a new workbook. I'm gonna just copy paste the information of the other form. So that's already done there. And now we're going to add the macros to clear the form, submit the form, or add new fields to the form. So let's go to the Visual Basic Editor, insert a new module, and the first thing we'll do is to clear the form. That's the easiest part. So we just need to get this range and clear the contents. But as this form may grow, we're going to actually get the last row with content in column B. And we will assign that to a variable, let's call it LR as an integer. And remember, we're going to use two worksheets, although we could do everything in one worksheet. But here we're going to use two worksheets. So this is going to be the form worksheet. And then we're going to have a second worksheet to add the entries. So that will be the registry. So we could use an object variable, but here we're going to use the object name of this worksheet, which is sheet one, as you can see here, sheet one is the worksheet form. So if the user changes the tab name here or the worksheet name, it's not going to affect our macro. So with sheet one, we're going to have LR equals dot. So sheet one dot cells rows count for column B and Excel app row. And that gives the last row with content in column B. Now we can say dot range C4 up to C and LR, we are gonna clear the contents. And we end the with here. So this is gonna clear the contents from C4 up to C9 in this case, because the last row with content in column B is nine. Now we can insert a button here or we can insert a shape also to clear the contents. So let's say clear form and um, we'll just make it a bit bigger and um, center. And now we right click the shape and we assign this macro that we just created. Okay, so if we add here any any date and numbers um, and we clear it will clear the values there so now let's go for the next macro and that's going to be submit form and we are actually going to check also the last row with content in case we have more fields than those that we have now. So now we have only these six fields, but there will be a possibility to add fields and we can actually add those manually as well. Yeah, in case you want to change the length of this, of this form, which here starts at row four, but it could also start at some other row. So you will have to change that here. But let's say the form always starts at row four. So now here I'm gonna actually copy all of this again because when we submit the form, we're gonna get the last row with content again in sheet one, which is the form worksheet. But we are not gonna clear the contents here. What we're gonna do is from C4 to C9, in this case, we are gonna copy the contents. And then 
with seed 2, okay, which is the registry sheet, there's where we're going to paste the contents. But before we do that, we need to add the headers, and the headers are going to be the same as these fields here. So I'm going to copy this manually to do it faster, and just paste transpose. And I want to get rid of the column there, so I'm going to do that with one line of code in the immediate window. And that's selection.replace, and we're going to replace the column with an empty string. Okay, so now we have got rid of the columns here, and those are the headers of our registry. And now we are going to get the last row of content in sheet 2. So again, I'm going to copy paste this, and we can use the same variable or we can use LR2, but actually we, we don't need to because LR is only going to be used here. So we can rewrite LR, and now starting in range A and the last plus one, so in the next row, so here for example LR will be one, so we're going to copy the things starting on row two. We're going to paste a special, so if we use paste special, we can then use transpose equals true. So we're going to actually paste that in a horizontal position instead of a vertical position. So it's going to be from a vertical arrangement here into a horizontal arrangement here. Then we can activate that sheet, and that's optional if you want to move to the registry every time you add a new entry. And we end the with statement here. But there's another thing we need to do here, uh, because when we copy something in Excel, it highlights the range with a dashed border. And in order to get rid of that, we use the application cat copy mode set to false. OK, so let's add a button here. And it's going to be a shape also to submit the form. and we right click and assign the submit form macro. So let's see how that works. And with that data, we can submit the form and then we get here the new entry. Now we may want to clear the form after submit or not. So I'm going to add a checkbox here to, to confirm if you want to clear the form or not. So we will add a checkbox here, and we're going to say clear form when submitted. And this checkbox has the name, you can see that here, checkbox1. So we're going to go back here to our macro, and we're going to say if in sheet one dot checkboxes and the name of our checkbox, and you can change the name if you if you wish. Value is one, so one is one is checked. Then we are gonna call the clear form macro up here. So I'm just gonna say then clear form. So if I submit without checking the box, adds a new entry but doesn't clear the form. But if I check the box now and submit, it adds a new entry and clears the form. And finally, we're going to add another macro to add a new field to the form. And to do that, again, we're going to check the last row with content. So I'm going to reuse again this code here. We're going to get the last row in column B. I will remove this and I will say and I will say in sheet one dot rows LR plus one we're gonna insert a new row and that will not add the formatting so we're gonna add to the range B 
LR plus 1 up to C. LR plus 1, we're going we're gonna to add the border. Line style, and it's going to be continuous. So let's add a button for that too. And right click and add field. So if we click now this button, it adds a new field. Now, before we finish, I want to explain something that probably you were wondering why did we copy this once, twice, and several times? So this is not effective. I've done that just to explain you how to do that, but we should actually use a function to get the last row with content. And that would work as follows. So down here, I would say function, let's say it could be LR, but let's call it last row. And this will accept the parameter, which is the sheet, because we are checking the last row in the first sheet and in some other macro, we are checking the last row in another sheet. So we're gonna call this SH. And this would work, but to be more correct, it's better to declare the variable. So for a function, we do it here. So SH as a worksheet and the last row as an integer. Okay, so that's the same as declaring with dim, but for a function, we can actually do it here. And now we just need to use this formula. Instead of LR, we, we say last row. So the function last row needs to return the last row. So that should be the same, okay? And here we will specify the sheet with SH. So what do we get from this? So now we can go back to our macros and we don't need to write this here. And we don't need to declare that, of course. And then we can say here, instead of LR, we can say last row, which is the function, and it's going to take, in this case, sheet one as a parameter. The same in this other macro. We don't need this anymore. We don't need the formula. And we don't need that. And here we're going to say last row for sheet one, while down here we're going to say, and again, we, we're going to remove this. And here we're going to say last row for sheet two. And finally, the same on the third macro. So we are saving a lot of code here using a function. Last row, and this was sheet one again. Last row, sheet one. And that's how we programmers do. So we create functions instead of rewriting something several times. So this is how we create a registration system in Excel using VVA macros. And the system consists of a registration form, an onboarding form in this case, where we add the entries to the cells into a range in the first worksheet. And when submitting the form, the entries are saved to the registry in a second worksheet. I hope this was informative and thanks for watching.